Hey guys, Proper English here. Last time we talked about division, we got into an algorithm that we'll be using. And part of that algorithm involved subtracting, but only performing that subtraction if we're going to get a positive result. So today we're going to get into some of the redstone circuitry and learn about a device called a conditional subtractor that will allow us to subtract, but only have the subtraction go through if we're getting a zero or greater. So let's get started. All right, so one thing to remember for today is we're not focusing on keeping this fast or compact. We're just focusing on the logic, okay? So if you want to take this and try to make a fast and small version, be my guest. In fact, I'd highly recommend doing that because it's a good exercise in design. But we're not focusing on design in this tutorial. The point here is to understand how this thing works. All right, so let's do a quick tour of what we've got here. Now in iron over here, I've got an adder and we've actually turned this into a subtractor by turning the carry in on and inverting one of our inputs. So the red input over here is inverted. And so this is a twos complement subtractor. And so if you're not familiar with that, I've got a tutorial on it. Check it out. You'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. And so we'll take a quick look at our inputs. We're subtracting the red input from the blue input. Okay, and now if you see this diamond line coming up above the subtractor and over here, this is allowing us to take that blue input, the one we're subtracting from, and bypass the subtractor. Okay, then at this end over here, we've got a multiplexer. If you're not familiar with multiplexers, check out my tutorial. You'll understand them perfectly. And we're controlling the multiplexer with our carry out from the subtractor. And then of course we've got our output over here in Emerald. And yeah, so let's do a couple of examples and see how this thing actually works. All right, so the purpose of a conditional subtractor is to only perform a subtraction when the output is zero or greater. So let's try doing an example where we get a positive output. We'll turn this guy on so that's the 4 bit and we'll turn this guy on so that's a 5 in our blue input and we'll subtract 3 from 5 so we'll turn this one on that's the 2 bit and then the 1 bit so that's 5 minus 3 if we come over here we can see our output is 2 now let's take a look at how the multiplexer is right now what's the state of the multiplexer well we've got our carry out on Okay, and we're going to get the carry out being on when we get a positive result from our subtraction. And what that's doing is it's saying, well, we're getting a positive result, let's take the output of our subtractor. So the subtractor is outputting a 2, and the multiplexer is selecting that as the output. But what happens when we get a negative output from our subtractor? All right let's do a subtraction that will result in a negative answer. So we'll turn this guy on, so that's 2, and we'll subtract 5 from 2, the reverse of what we did before. All right, so 2 minus 1, 0, 1, that's 2 minus 5, and what is our answer? Well, the conditional subtractor is giving us a 2 as our output. So what's going on here? Well, if we take a look at the subtractor itself, not the output from the conditional subtractor, but the output from the subtractor part of that, we've got a 1, 1, 0, 1. And that is a negative 3. We can check that by taking the 2's complement of this. If we invert that, that's 1, 0. And we're adding a 1, so it ends up being 1, 1. So that's 3. So this guy is a negative 3. And that's one input to our multiplexer, but we're not selecting that input. What we're doing is we're selecting the input that comes from the blue input to our conditional subtractor. And so how does that work? Well, the carry out from our subtractor is off when we get a negative answer. So what we're doing is we're saying when the carry out is off, we're going to select the diamond input to our multiplexer, so that gives us a positive answer and we bypass the subtraction, and that is how the conditional subtractor works. 
All right, so today you've learned how to build the core component of a divider called a conditional subtractor. And next time, we're going to take it to the full divider. We're going to hook up a bunch of conditional subtractors and actually build a division circuit. We're not going to stop there, though. In the tutorial after that, we're going to take it even further, but you'll have to wait till next time to find out what's coming. So thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope you learned something, and I will see you guys next time.